Crunches and welcome back to Death Synchrony City. Uh, some big explosion had happened, and we finally got out of this refugee camp. And we're trying to get some medicine to this city. Let's go. So, I enter the city. It welcomes me with its most merciless and bitter grimace. What I see before my eyes is not what I expected. Doomsday made it here, too, even if no one in the refugee camp knows it yet. Damn it. The city looks as bruised and battered by the catastrophe as the rest of us. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's trying to get in. What is he doing? Help me, please! Help me! Don't let them find me in the street after curfew. They'll take me to the refugee camp. Help me, please! But don't make any noise. There's a patrol just round the corner. The refugee camp is just the one that we escaped from. You don't want to go there. It sucks. But what is he going to need me to do? It's almost curfew. I need a place to sleep. I need a place to hide, or they'll send me to the refugee camp. Don't you understand? What is all this about a curfew? At curfew, the soldiers want the streets cleared. And the way they see it, if you're out on the street after curfew, it means that you've got nowhere to go. You don't have a home. You don't belong here. And that makes you a rat. And so they take you to the refugee camp. I can't go to the camp, understand? I can't go there. You need a roof over your head, and you don't have anywhere to go. I used to, but it doesn't exist anymore. I owned an apartment a few blocks from here. The block was badly damaged by the Great Wave, but it was still standing. And what happened to your home? This morning, we had to evacuate the area in a hurry. We ran out in the streets with whatever we had on. Apparently, the foundation was starting to crumble. And a few hours later, all that was left of my home was a pile of smoking rubble, with 40 years of memories buried beneath it. But I can't let them take me to the camp. I need to get into another house before the curfew. Please, help me. I'll try to help you. Okay. Give me those bolt cutters. I'll see what I can do. This house is empty, but the army has sealed it off. If I can just get this padlock off before curfew, I'll be safe. I need to get in here. But please, don't make too much noise. If the soldiers find us, they won't hesitate to kill us. I'm sorry. I can't do anything with this. I need to get in there. I need to get in. Hmm. I'm looking for a place. Something like a pharmaceutical warehouse. Would you know anything about that? I don't really know. There's a small medical center just outside the city limits. I suppose you mean that, right? They built it in a hurry. Just knocked it together. After the Great Wave, no one really knows what it's for, but there are vehicles going in and out of the place all the time. Whatever they're doing in there, they're keeping it very secret. Not even my daughter would tell me what goes on inside. Did you say your daughter? Yes, my daughter. My little Uma. She works there as a nurse. I'm afraid she left me. I suppose she got tired of living with a frail, sick old man like me. Because one day she simply left the house, and I haven't seen her since. It's been months now. I think she was right to leave me. These times are hard enough. You don't want to burn yourself with someone like me. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Help me, please. Sorry, buddy. That old man needs to find shelter, or he'll be moved to the refugee camp. I'm afraid that in his condition, and his age, he wouldn't last long out there. 
I feel for him, but I don't see how I can help him. Well, maybe I can find a place. It's the silhouette of the soldiers guarding the street from around the corner. It seems like those uniformed psychopaths rifles are projected onto each and every corner of the city. Do I have something on me? Guess I could give him the bracelet. This bracelet is my key to getting in and out of the camp without problems. I prefer to hold on to it. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Hey guys. Hello friend. You look lost. Come over by the fire. It's dying down, but maybe it'll last until curfew. As long as those uniformed psychopaths don't decide to end our little get-together first, of course. Hey, look. One of those magic bracelets from the camp. They say that place is a real hellhole. A kind of living death. So, you've come back from the dead. Do they call you Lazarus? Well, you could put it that way. You were saying something about a curfew. What time does it start exactly? Well, it depends on the mood of the soldiers in this zone. But you know it's time to go home when they start taking their guns out of their holsters. Today they're extremely jumpy. I don't think it'll be long before they start insulting people and hitting them with their rifle butts. You guys are awfully hard on them. It's just their crude way of showing us affection. Oh, shut up. In any case, you don't have to worry. That bracelet means you don't have to hide from them. You know, that's one of the privileges that comes with it. And you? Do you people have to hide? We try to stay out of their way. The first rule is, be home before curfew. Anyone who isn't, gets dragged off to refugee camp. That's one of the strictest laws the Great Wave imposed upon this city. And do you know how things are elsewhere? Do you get news from outside? I'm afraid not. With no communications or transportation, and with the army on every corner, we are totally cut off. Who cares anyway? When you don't know from one day to the next if you're gonna be alive, there's no time to worry about what happens a hundred, a thousand, or a hundred thousand miles away. I understand. Why are you afraid of the soldiers? I'd heard that things functioned better here. I don't know where you heard that, friend, but whoever told you that was lying. Here, things are very ugly and getting uglier every day. Everything's in short supply, water, food, medicine. We have a surplus of just two things, misery and violence. Life is cheap here, and getting cheaper all the time. Especially since the army took over. The army? I see. And what happened to the other authorities? The politicians? The laws? Those are distant memories from the old world, my dear. Get them out of your head, because all that collapsed like a house of cards. Since the Great Wave, no one's got any plan, strategy. We're all adrift. He's right. The most reliable thing we have left is what you see around the corner. Armed teenagers in uniform on the streets, on the rooftops, just as scared as we are, or more, and shooting anything that moves. I think our common destiny is to finally die of starvation, of disease, or boredom. I don't know which of the three options I find the most cruel. Who knows? Maybe the most sensible thing is to organize a group excursion and break into Suicide Park. Suicide Park. Don't call it that. It's not funny. That name's as stupid as that hospital they built in such a hurry next to it. It's crazy. The entire city is starving and sick, and the soldiers keep those medical facilities locked up like Fort Knox. But what good is it having medical facilities if no one can use them? I don't understand. No one does, friend. But that's the way it is. I don't know why anyone would want to go into that building. But I can assure you that they're not going to get treated for anything in there. Not even for a miserable cold. Besides, it's a real fortress. The person would be more likely to come out sick from an overdose of gunpowder and lead. You know how it is, dear. There's no cure for love or death. Hey, I like that last phrase. It would make a good opening line for a story. Oh, will you shut up for once, Ramon? Don't pay any attention to him. In the old world, he earned his living writing stories, and he still thinks that all that waste paper might someday be useful after the Great Wave. And in fact, it is. A good deal of that scrap paper is fueling this bonfire right now, dear. So I can consider my literary career to have been worthwhile. <laughs> At least he has humor, the guy with the hat. Did you say Suicide Park? 
Someone in the camp told me about that place. And the first dark stars come out to hang from the sky. We could sit and count them together, you and I. When the sun departs from Suicide Park. Yes, I recognize the song. But what the hell is it? Is there really a place with that name? <sighs> yes, it exists. After the Great Wave, and when things were starting to get really ugly here, the weakest among us eased their suffering with a bullet, by overdosing, or by jumping from high places. You know how it is. All those dark stars had a hard time finding a reason to go on living. There was a terrible wave of suicides, and there still is. The problem is at some point a problem arose. How should I put it? A serious logistical problem. Access to drugs and firearms became practically impossible. So the easiest thing was to grab a rope or a belt and go to Suicide Park after dark. There was a time when it was hard to find a free branch anywhere in the park. The suicides in the area multiplied at such a rate that the army closed down the park. They said for public health reasons. For months, the only thing blooming in that park were the corpses of the hanged. The place became more like a theme park. Lots of fun for everyone. I told you not to make jokes about that. Don't you have any respect for anything? Of course not. That was one of the many things I lost in the Great Wave. And one of the things I miss the least, believe me. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for the company, friend. All right, all right, all right. Dwellers, marking time until curfew. After that, the street will have to be totally deserted. The traffic in this part of the city must have been especially heavy, but now you can barely hear the sound of the few army vehicles still circulating in the surrounding areas. Do I have? Okay. A few buildings are still standing, but most of them are propped up or about to fall down, with a handful of city dwellers in the street that look like automatons or sleepwalkers. But there's no doubt about it. I'm on the Fifth Avenue of Doomsday City. Judging from what remains of the stained glass windows and the murals, this pile of rubble must have been a place of worship before the Great Wave struck. Now it's one of the most badly damaged buildings in the area. There are hardly any walls still standing. Uh, so, I guess we can go down there. Can't go down there. Can go down there. Old Man, Main Street, is there anything down here, it's the ruins of the church, alright, let's go in. Send us a sign, Lord, we need a sign from you. Hey, wait a minute, I know that voice. Are we guilty of arousing your rage? Did we do it? Speak with your tongue of fire, Lord. Purge us with unrelenting justice. Send us a sign. Is this our doing? Are you punishing us for our arrogance? Unleash your thunderous voice, Lord. Release us from this intolerable uncertainty. Did we do it? Send us a sign! I'm getting a strong impression that man's a fanatic and a little bit deranged. But a sermon made me curious. What could he mean by, we did it? The thunderous voice of your angels through the gash. That is your sign. Uh-oh. Oh no. Here comes that sensation again. She's still there. It's like floating in a dense liquid. While everything around me is transformed. Usually, when they ask you suspicions, it's not the future. Yeah. I think I'm starting to lose my mind. So, if she's still there in the future. Hmm. I didn't notice the, well, the church in tech. I don't know. A few parishioners listen to the words of the preacher. Mesmerized. Although I'm sure that, like me, they can't decipher the meaning of his mystical rants either. What is this? Yes, we can pick up stuff. Sweet. The remains of the stained glass window Did that went with the intact it? one on the Are other side of the door the of the church. Ones? The great wave must have shattered it. Right there. 
this enormous stone cross casts a giant shadow across the aisle of the church. Perhaps that wasn't the original intention, but the result is pretty gloomy and menacing. This column fragment must have fallen off one of the walls during the catastrophe. Now it's keeping the pedestal of the statue company. Sculpture. Oh, the catastrophe caused a lot of damage to the statue's pedestal. The fact that the statue is still standing is a miracle. The pedestal definitely wobbles when I push against it. The thunderous voice of your angels through the gash. The catastrophe caused a lot of damage to the statue's pedestal. The fact that the statue is still standing is a miracle. Hmm. Considering the condition of the rest of the church, it's amazing that the stained glass Did window is still in place and practically intact. Such little one. light that gets in from the street gives it a ghostly appearance. Glass bracelet. Illuminate us with your fiery voice. Seated on these disarranged pews, some people are listening to the preacher, others just nod off. I guess they don't have anywhere else to go. Yeah, that's that's the truth. Did we do it? Are we the guilty ones? That must be Reverend Blake, the preacher I heard about in the camp. I don't understand a word of that man's sermon. And I'm afraid the other faithful don't either. Could that be the reason why everyone reveres him so much? I'm not gonna interrupt him in the middle of, of his sermon. That would be rude. That is your oh, so I need to to interrupt with the statue, right? Okay, go this way. The thunderous voice of your angels through the gash. That is your sign. So I need to find something to push that. I don't think that's gonna work though. I don't think Did I'd gain anything by using this here. Yeah. I wouldn't know how to use these glass shards here. Yeah. I wanna like pull that away. Oh maybe I need that tool. Hmm. Oh I can take that sign. Let's see. I can try to rip it off. <coughs> Nothing. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to get it off with my hands. Yeah, and it probably that. Uh -huh. What was formerly the entrance to a subway stop is now a bunker reinforced with bricks and cement. A moldy sign says, Subway service suspended until further notice. I imagine the train tunnels were flooded or ruined after the great wave. Oh, but I might have dude down there, though. What's this? Don't see any loot. Okay. Interesting. This fence protects the compound on all four sides. As impenetrable and menacing as the one around the refugee camp. It seems like barbed wire barricades are the only architecture possible in this new world. It's rather Ooh, disconcerting to see such a small center. building surrounded by such extreme security measures. Could this be the medical center people have been telling me about? Manhole. So, let's see. Impossible. It's not that it's super heavy. It's that there's hardly any place to insert your fingers to lift this manhole cover. I'm afraid I can't do that. Closed for public health reasons is written on this piece of wood nailed to the stump. Wait a minute. Health? With no A? Oh, I took the sign. Oh, nails. Hmm. Best not to waste time trying to nail this here. doesn't look like it's having any effect. <laughs> Alright Crunches, thank you so much for watching. Leave a like below, a comment, subscribe to the channel if you want to see my episodes. And I'll see you next time.
Bye, guys.